I am the salvation of the people, says the Lord. Should they cry to me in any distress, I will hear them, and I will be their Lord forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is being offered for your petitions and for the health of, of your family members. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to Peace, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all, your, all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Hear this, you who trample upon the needy and destroy the poor of the land. When will the new moon be over, you ask? That we may sell our grain in the Sabbath, that we may display the wheat? We will diminish the ephah, add to the shekel, and fix our scales for cheating. We will buy the lowly for silver and the poor for a pair of sandals. Even the refuge of the wheat we will sell. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, never will I forget a thing they have done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm responds, praise the Lord who lifts up the poor. Praise the Lord who lifts up the poor. Praise you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, both now and forever. Praise the Lord who lifts up the poor. High above all nations is the Lord. Above the heavens is his glory. Who is like the Lord our God, who is enthroned on high and looks upon the heavens and the earth below. Praise the Lord who lifts up the poor. He raises up the lowly from the dust. From the dunghill he lifts up the poor to seal, seat them with princes, with the princes of his own people. Praise the Lord who lifts up the poor. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, first of all, I ask that supplications, prayer, petitions, and thanksgiving be offered for everyone, for kings and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and tranquil life in all devotion and dignity. This is good and pleasing to God our Savior, who wills everyone to be saved, and to come to knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as ransom for all. This was the testimony at the proper time. For this, I was appointed preacher and apostle. I am speaking the truth, I am not lying teacher of the Gentiles in faith and in truth. It is my wish then 
that in every place the men should pray, lifting up holy hands without our, without anger or argument. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Though our Lord Jesus Christ was rich, he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, A rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, What is this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship, because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, What shall I do? Now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me, I am not strong enough to dig and I am ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do, so that when I am removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. He called in his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, How much do you owe my master? He replied, One hundred measures of olive oil. He said to him, Here is your prom promissory note. Sit down and quickly write one for fifty. Then to another the steward said, And how much do you owe? He replied, One hundred cores of wheat. The steward replied to him, Here is your promissory note. Write one for eighty. And the master commended that dishonest steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. I tell you, Make friends for yourselves with dishonest wealth, so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. The person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones, and the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. If, therefore, you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, who will trust you with true, true wealth? If you are not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? No servant can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good day, everyone. And I pray everybody had a, a wonderful week. Uh, my friends, we have a difficult gospel today in so many ways, especially when we hear Jesus say, you know, make friends with dishonest wealth. Um, it just, you know, so many. It, I always remember uh, when I was first ordained and this gospel came up, the diocese, they didn't do it this time, but the diocese, for whatever reason at that time, um, they sent out a message to all the priests and you know about this particular gospel and they said well if you want to preach on the beauty of marriage you could preach on the beauty of marriage I, I, none of us knew why <laughs> it's like you could preach on the beauty of marriage if you wish you know um, but it's just it's it's a gospel where Jesus is putting everything in order and he's kind of showing us that in this incredible parable of the the steward, the dishonest steward, as it, it's come to be known. And we see the man doing exactly what our Lord is saying. You know, he's, he's measuring out everything. You know, he knows he's going to be let go, which we don't actually hear happen. And I think that's very telling, too. Uh, but he knows he's going to be let go, and he starts thinking to himself, I, I, I'm not strong enough to do, you know, physical labor. And I, I'm, you know, too prideful to beg. So this is what I'm going to do. And so it really is a presumption on the generosity of his master. Because he's sitting down there with the promissory note saying, write this, write this. Uh, quickly write this, you know, and it's a half of the olive oil and, you know, 20% off of the, uh, the, the grain. But it's also up to the the master to honor those particular debts. You know, it, you don't get a sense of in there, it's kind of not stated actually, if the master knows exactly what's owed to him or not. But he is moved by the servant's, uh, you know, 
wiliness, shall we say, his, his mindset in dealing with it. He, he really moves him. And so you don't hear him uh, getting rid of his servant. You know, that's not part of the gospel. It ends with him being commended for his prudence. And so, it's, again, I always look on this as a really a reminder to us of, you know, we owe the master so much. We all, all of us, we all of us are in so many ways um, dishonest stewards. We're all dishonest servants of the Lord. We're all sinful. And what we see in the servant is that he's forgiving, you know, some of the debt that is owed. And we have to remember to do that for each other as well. You know, so to me, it's also uh, a, a parable that complements that if we want forgiveness from God, uh, from our master, then we have to also forgive others. I think that very much is contained in that gospel. But then as it comes into the ending of the gospel, we hear, you know, make, you know, make uh, friends with dishonest wealth. And basically it's telling us in, you know, to uh, put even priority, put our priorities in order, shall we say, when we're dealing with wealth. You know, it's not something that we can serve. We can't serve both God and mammon, God and wealth, and that's what it's telling us. You know, money's good, but it's a neutral object. So many people, you know, uh, treat it as something that is the ultimate good. And, you know, there's places for it, there's need for it, nobody denies that, but to just slavishly follow it and try to accumulate it uh, is not what we're here for. We're here for service to God, and that's what we always have to, to keep in mind. So basically what this comes down to, uh, even in my weak way of preaching this homily, is it really is about putting a balance in our lives and putting wealth in where it really needs to be. It should not be something that is first and foremost in our lives. That's reserved strictly for the Heavenly Father. But, you know, uh, so just to have that priority on where wealth sits. Because, again, if we just kind of go in reckless pursuit of that, it really will change us and change who we are. And so we have to be prudent in, our, in how we treat uh, our own money, our own, you know, what we have accumulated, our own goods and always to keep the Heavenly Father first and foremost in our lives. God bless you all. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. God is our helper who sustains and sanctifies our life. With confidence in our Father's unfailing love, we ask him. For the church, that through her the good news of God's love may be proclaimed to the poor and all in need of mercy, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's bounteous kindness will transform the hearts and minds of those who govern and legislate, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That on this National Catechetical Sunday, 
God may bless all those engaged in the work of education in the faith, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the conversion of all those whose lives are dominated by envy, violence, or hatred, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and to the consecrated life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to be generous and faithful stewards of all that has been we've been entrusted with, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray also for the men and women in our military and our first responders. May they come home safely and soon. And may those who have seen war or violence find peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, thank you for the countless proofs of your gentleness. May we always praise your name for its goodness. We ask this as we ask all things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Through the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. You have laid down your precepts to be carefully kept. May my ways be firm in keeping your statutes. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. At this time, we offer our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. And have a blessed and wonderful week, everyone.